guys, it's Friday. It's time for family story time. I'm Miss Stephanie. I'm going to read some really fun books with you today. But before we read anything, we have to get our hands warmed up and we have to wave hello to each other. We wave hello like this. We wave hello like this. With all our friends, it's story time. We wave hello like this. Hello! Well, as always, I have picked out four books for you that I think will be fun to read together. Look at this one. It's called On Account of the Gum. And it's written and illustrated by Adam Rex. Can you tell where the gum is? Oh, no. It's in his hair. Has that ever happened to you? First, look, a bubble. And then, look, sleep. Can you see the gum? And then, uh-oh, when you wake up, on account of the gum. That's the gum right there that you got in your hair. On account of the gum that you got in your hair, your dad said, sit still, and your sister said, duck, and you sat very still. Still, the scissors got stuck in the gum that you got in your hair. Okay, we went on some websites, and all of them swear, if you want to get scissors and gum out of your hair, you take two sticks of butter and smear them along and <clears throat> I see it appears that those websites were wrong did the butter get the gum out uh, yeah now he's got gum and butter don't give me that look it says Your aunt said she knew how to get the gum out from this tip in a book she was reading about. In the paper or something, she couldn't say where. The point is, that's why you have grass in your hair. Oh no, now it's butter and gum and grass and scissors. Your grandpa, who said that your aunt was mistaken, is mostly to blame for the noodles and bacon. It's all in this bacony, noodly mass with the scissors, gum, hair, sticks of butter and grass. Oh dear. Hmm, your rabbit eats grass. Because of the grass that you got in your hair, I assumed that your rabbit could help us in there, but your rabbit just sat like it thinks it's a hat, so I thought it'll leave if I bring in the cat. You think that's true? I'm prepared to admit I was wrong about that. Oh, I know what to do. It's a little bit mean, but the cat always gets really scared when I clean. Just watch. She'll run off and hide under the bed if the vacuum comes anywhere close to your head. Oh, no. Not the vacuum. Wait. No. I'm thinking of the old cat. So that's not even the cat that's scared of the vacuum. Your aunt just came back and she has a new take. It's cake. She thinks she can fix things with cake. Don't worry, we stopped her and showed her the door. I doubt she'll be coming around anymore. Oh dear. Though the cake that she made you wound up on the floor. Oh no. Not the cake. Oh, that reminds me. Happy birthday. It wasn't for his hair. It was for his birthday and now it's smashed. Ugh. All right, let's get serious. This is the plan. We blow the gum out with a powerful fan. Plus every few seconds we'll pop a balloon. And the guy with the bees said he'd get them here soon. And oh, I hear sirens. The firemen came. They complained when we called, but they came just the same. With their hoses and one of those dogs and a cop and a big pot of chili. They're ready to stop! Get out! Just didn't want the chili from the pot.
<laughs> Jeez, the gum says. Rude. So, that's the solution. Well, what do you know? Too bad about all of the rest of it, though. The rest of the stuff that's still stuck in your hair. <laughs> Whoop! Now your aunt is all stuck up in there. How'd that happen? Anyway, you'd better get to school. Because otherwise, you're going to miss picture day. What? <laughs> On account of the gum. Was that silly or what? The gum just hopped off and walked away? That was super, super silly. <laughs> well, I hope you never get gum stuck in your hair. Oh, okay. I have another book called Alligator by Judith Henderson and illustrated by Andrea Stegmeier. Alligator. In the middle of a great forest just outside town, there it is, there's a red house that sits next to a hidden lake. This is where the boy lives. The lake is big enough for one medium-sized whale, which is a perfect size. The boy loves to go for walks in the forest. It was on one of these walks that he came upon something that stopped him in his tracks. Alligator! The alligator tried to move, but he was stuck. His foot was trapped in a twisty vine. Grr. Um, said the boy, thinking fast, you must be hungry. Here, have my tuna sandwich. He placed it just close, to, close enough and jumped back. Schwap. I'll go get some more, said the boy. He raced home and returned with a big bag of food. Schwap, schwap. Here's some lasagna, arugula, broccoli, onion, schwap. The alligator ate everything except the onion spit. He even ate the bag. Scrunch, scrunch, scrunch. The boy had brought his pocket knife to cut through the twisty vine, but how was he going to get near enough to do it? The alligator burped when he let out a huge yawn. That gave the boy an idea. He began to sing, Alligator, go to sleep. People are not good to eat. When you wake, you will be free. Please, please do not eat me. I like that song. There it was, the alligator. Wait, did I skip a page? I did. It was a brilliant idea. The alligator fell fast asleep, and the boy used his pocket knife to cut the twisty vine. Then he ran home as fast as he could. That night, he heard rustling outside his window. He got out of bed and peeked through the curtains. There it was, the alligator waiting, but not in a hungry way. Are you lonely? the boy asked. He opened the door and tossed Theodore, his stuffy, outside. Please don't eat him, he said, then quickly shut the door. Through the window, the boy sang the alligator lullaby. The alligator snuggled up with Theodore and went to sleep. The next morning, Theodore was still there. Thank goodness. Over time, the boy and the alligator became friends. Let's go to town, the boy said. One day, please don't eat anybody. So off they went to the market. The townspeople were very upset. They called. A town meeting was called. Ah, run! They're scared. The mayor made a proclamation. No alligators, blah, blah, blah. That evening, there was a knock at the boy's door. I'm the mayor, said the mayor. I have made an official proclamation. No alligators, blah, blah, blah. But he's lonely, said the boy, and hungry. The boy thought fast. You know, he's actually a very helpful alligator. If you bring him your leftovers, he will eat them. No more waste. 
the townspeople talked it over. Well, we don't want a hungry alligator or lonely. It would be helpful, sort of. No, no, shouted the mayor. I'm the mayor and I don't want any alligator. Silly proclamation. And he hasn't even eaten anyone yet. It's not fair. The boy didn't know what to do. But then something surprising happened. He discovered that he didn't have to do anything. Every night the townspeople brought the alligator their leftovers. The boy was happy, the townspeople were happy, and the alligator was happy. The mayor, however, was not happy. Where is that alligator? He grumbled, grumbled, grumbled. Whenever the mayor came near, the alligator found a place to hide. The mayor searched high and low, near and far, here and there, but he could not find the alligator because the alligator was so good at hiding. What, over time, the alligator ate and ate and grew and grew. He swam in the lake and sometimes the little boy let him go into the forest alone. There was never any problem except once when a moose went missing. But the bigger he got, the harder it was for the alligator to hide. The boy and the townspeople held a secret meeting. Where can we hide him? The fountain? Too visible. How about under your bunk bed? Why not yours? The fire station? The school? How about the library? I've never seen the mayor go in there. But the alligator needs to be near water, the boy said. He looked over at the alligator. How huge it was. I have an idea, the boy exclaimed. <laughs> Together, the boy and the townspeople made a disguise. It was a brilliant idea, a whale of an idea. Did you catch that hint? There we go. It did the trick. The mayor never did find the alligator, and curiously, nobody could find the mayor. Spit. <laughs> So the town elected a new mayor who wrote a new proclamation and things became peaceful again. If you ever go to visit the boy and the alligator, don't forget to learn the alligator lullaby. Alligator, go to sleep. People are not good to eat. When you wake, you will be free. Please, please do not eat me. Dream, dream, dream away. Now you're here, you're here to stay and you found a place to be. Thank you for not eating me. <laughs> and me, says the moose. And bring some leftovers, just in case. Did you like that one? Okay, well, I think this means we have to sing a song. And we'll start with song with a crocodile which is row 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 your boat are you ready row 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 your boat gently down the stream merrily 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 life is but a dream there's no crocodile in there i made that up but there is an alligator in this version of the song are you ready it goes we'll sing it twice so you can learn it and then we'll sing it together again rock 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 your boat mightily down the stream oh you guys i'm so confused about crocodiles and alligators there is a crocodile in this version of the song. Not a song about alligators. Let's start again. Rock, rock, rock your boat mightily down the stream. If you see a crocodile, don't forget to scream. Ah! Do you think we could do it again with alligators? Do you think that would work? I'm going to try it. Are you ready? Rock, rock, rock your boat mightily down the stream. If you see an alligator, don't forget to scream. It did work. It totally worked. Let's do it together one more time, okay? Let's sing both versions of the song. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. <laughs> merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Rock, rock, rock your boat mightily down the stream. If you see an alligator, don't forget to scream. Ah! I did it. It was really close. I almost forgot again. Okay. Here's a book, and it's called The Neighbors, and it's written by Anat Sarfati. Sarfati. Yeah, Sarfati. Okay. I live in a building that is seven stories high. 
that's pretty high. There's the door. There are the mailboxes. Every floor has a slightly different door. This, the first door, has a lot of locks. It does, and a security camera. That apartment belongs to a family of thieves. They just love ancient Egyptian artifacts. Uh-oh. The second door is always surrounded by muddy footprints. Whose muddy feet are those? That is the house of an old explorer and his pet tiger. I don't know if that's a good idea. The red door is the door with the wheel. Behind that door lives a family of acrobats. They are always looking for ways to improve their act. When I reach the fourth door, the light always shuts off. Oh dear. Because that is the vampire's apartment. It's like the vampire sews clothes and does embroidery. The fifth door smells like pickled fish. I don't think she likes that smell. Inside, the pirate lives with his love. Who's a mermaid? I always stop at the sixth door to listen to really cool music that flows out into the hall. The musical family who lives inside celebrates someone's birthday at least once a week. It's a big family. Ooh, the seventh door. The seventh door is where I live with my parents. They are so boring. room but I love them and they love me oh my goodness look they turned into superheroes and they're sneaking out who do you think gets to wear this costume hmm maybe one day that's cool neighbors all right, here's our last book. It's called Smug Seagull. Nobody swipes snacks like me. And it's written by Maddie Frost and illustrated by Maddie Frost. If you want to see something exciting, he says, watch this. <gasps> Swipe. We got a sandwich. Get a good look because I just so happen to be the best snack swiper from shore to shore and that's a fact. Being the best means I got guts. I strike when the sun is hot. If you know what I'm saying, swipe. Are you keeping up because I'm just getting started? Swipe, 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 swipe. Walk with me, talk with me. Being the best is a big deal. I got my name in lights. It says, please don't feed the seagulls. I got my name in the sky. Seagull Grill now open, it says. People come from miles away to capture my beauty. Is he painting a seagull? No. The fans go crazy when I'm around. Arf, 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 arf. I even have my own signature dance move. With one of these and these sliding to the right, all in the core. Cha cha cha, oh yeah, hop one time. Ow! Time to bring it home and splat! Scurry, scurry, scurry. Ooh, that crab has a crunch.
fry. Say short stuff, that's one scrumptious looking french fry you got there. Mind if I have a, give me a, let me take a flop, flop, flop. Hey, look, a rainbow. Swipe. Uh-oh. Like I always say, you got to be tough. You got to be pop. <laughs> Swipe. Oh, Krabby got the fry back. All right, listen up, short stuff. Nobody, I mean, nobody swipes for me. Don't you know who I am? Didn't you read my sign? Well, pal, I just so happen to be the... Flip. Ooh, no, you don't. All right, we got ourselves a situation. A big, I don't think so. Now it's time to get serious. He's got all his gear on. Plunge. Keep out. Ah! Sand, I love you, Sand. <laughs> I mean, I got a cramp in my wing, see? And I stubbed my toe, see? So I'll just swipe myself another snack. Yeah, because I can swipe anything I feel like, no doubt about it. Ooh, ah! They're all spraying him, barking at him. I, I, I've lost my swipe. I've lost my swipe to a crab. This is the end. Goodbye signs. Goodbye fans. Goodbye special lookout tower handcrafted just for me. I'll have to move to a lake and eat soggy breadcrumbs with ducks. I don't want to hang out with ducks. Well, if it isn't Mr. Fancy Legs, you've got a lot of nerve coming around my neck of the beach. And another thing, <gasps> a tiny human? Crunch, 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 munch, munch. Back away slowly. They can be very unpredictable. If this thing comes any closer, get ready to... Run! Oh, hi, hi, Krabby. Would you like a cheese puff? Here you go. Bye-bye, <laughs> nice Krabby. Short stuff, you're... A genius! Hi, could I please have some? Thanks, nice sand castle. If you don't want the crust, we'll be right here. And like lying on our bellies too. And crackers. You know, you got guts, little pal. Is it all right if I call you little pal? With your charm and my one-of-a-kind good looks, we make a great team. Maybe even the best. So just stick with me and you'll go places. No doubt about it. Time to turn on that charm, little pal. They're busting out the marshmallows. I guess they think they're going to get some of those. That's funny. But I think when it says don't feed the seagulls, you're really not supposed to feed them. <laughs> it is nice that they learn to use manners, though. All right, friends. Those are all of the books I have for today. So I will see you again next week. Take care.